their All-American preseason and Matt Kerman watch list. Valentin Noel looking to replicate his form last year. Jasper Laffelsen back at the right back spot, second team All-American. And these young men will remain taking the knee in 2021 in an illustration of the desire and need for social justice and change. We're about to get out of the way. This is the 10th match of the ACC teams playing today. We'll get you scores from around the league coming up later in the broadcast, but the number three team in the nation, the preseason favorite to win it all in the best conference in college soccer, has the ball to start things off with all ACC players from last year littered all over this team, and this is one of them. Jasper Laffelzend, first team all ACC, as I just mentioned, second team all American. Devin, early on in this match, what do you look for from each team that know each other well? They played just in, last, just in February, 1-0 win by the Panthers. One of the most difficult things you're going to run through is the fact that you haven't gotten the opportunity to play a lot. So focus more on yourself rather than what the opposition is throwing at you in the opening 10 or 15 minutes. The coaches will replicate the same sentiment, Allen. Go out, work on what you've been doing in training, and just put one foot in front of the other. Don't get caught up in the emotion and the glamour around you. Decane on the road, it's going to be difficult, but that's going to reign true all night long. 90 minutes of tough play for Pitt. They're just focused on one thing. The next game in front of them, they don't want to look down the line and listen to all the people around them. Remove that noise. Just go out and put together a quality performance in your opening match. Rafael Crivello slipped. Crivello slipped, but was not punished in the end as Maxi Hopfer, heavy touch, took it out. Hopfer, a freshman from Austria, number 10 in red there. And a lot of these freshmen did early enroll at Duquesne, so they played in the spring. They had seven total games. Finished that portion of the season. Two and five. Played back to Nico Camputhano. All league keeper takes an extra touch. Young man from Spain. Distribution long, looking for Valentin Noel. Luke Moore chasing hard up in the, the starting nod. Hard worker, Bertan Jacasson, number 10 in white. Skipped by by Ryan Landry. Settled by Jackson Walty. For a pass, but Lafelzen is able to get on it. See the back and forth number five in the back. There, Arturo Udanez. Oh, another all league player, third team all year with the ball again. All ACC last year. That's Mohamed Abdul Nadi, who transferred in from Notre Dame. Two years, he played 35 games in the other center back spot. That's the one missing position as Bertan Jackasson tries to get on the long ball. Bryce Washington, the senior that played over 70 games, left Jay Vidovich's team. The only guy, only starter leaving. You see, he signed that extension now through 2025, was coach of the year last year. He has had an outstanding career, six time ACC coach of the year. Of course, built that Wake Forest program, or helped build it, I should say, did win that 2007 national title. And he took this pit program from, frankly, Devin, a laughing stock, a team that won two games in his first year, a team that had never contended, never won an NCAA game, had never won an ACC tournament game, to the College Cup in five seasons. How often do you hear, though, that it's, it's about a process, right? Everybody talks about culture and a process. You don't necessarily see that come to fruition. Vivic gets it. He knows exactly how to find success, and he does it at every stop that he's been at, no matter what. And coming back to Pitt, to your point, that slow start, some people started to spread a couple of rumors. Has he lost it? Has he been able to lose what he did before in that entire process? No, not whatsoever. In fact, he started to set a new standard within the school, stepped up every single season to the fact that he went from 2 to 8 to 10 to 16 in four years. That does not happen. Opportunity, a bad pass at the back, and Hopfer's trying to shake off the challenge just in time. Abul Nadi gets a leg on it, and the Dukes charging forward. Landry, ball plated, looking back post, just over the stretch of Nate Dragozic. Ryan Goodhue applying more pressure. There's Dragozic again. Pitt a little shaky early on here. Back to Abel Nadi. Oh, oh. 
Adiak and Jobin trying to skip through some defenders. Started to make the move, but got cut out by Mirkovic. Switched over to Crivillo. Jack Asson, freshman of the year last year in the ACC. Charging forward. Early ball played by Pekovic. And out of some sloppy passing, Duquesne almost had an opportunity here, Devin. Or had an about to the ball going the other direction. Yeah, how about the one that's whipped in, though? It's great in transition. And you have to watch, really, the amount of players that they have going forward because although they like to sit deep and they're going to give respect to Pitt, they've also got guys that can fly up top. Whether it's Hopfer, Mocha, Landry on the overlapping run, they're still going to provide themselves options when they do move into the final third. I just want to see, Dallin, how much pressure they're willing to sit back and take. As Coach Brooks in his ninth year for Duquesne did say to us, we want to make a team feel us. We want to, we want to be physical. We want to, we, don't, we want to give respect, as you said, but there's a fine line. And they want every time you play a Duquesne team to know that you're in a battle. Line up, long hobbled knot, he cuts it out. Nice ball to Perchakasson. Malti's able to keep it in possession of the, of the Panthers. There's that pressure again by Hopper just dropping down into the pocket, almost right in front of Dragasic and Ryan Goodhue. Creates a diamond of sorts defensively and it makes it difficult to play through someone like Jackson, Walty, or Petkovic when they drop off, clogging the midfield. They want to push them outside. And as they do, they've got the proper balance. Balance was a huge word coming out of the conversation with Chase Brooks. Hacken Jobin on the left, Ryan Landry on the right. The fact that you're willing to remove one of your offensive assets and Hopper, bring him into the defensive limelight immediately, and then still create opportunities going forward is a good sense for Duquesne on the road here. And there is Brooks, you see, in his ninth season before he came to Duquesne. He was at Niagara, won a, a little MAC, M-A-A-C, Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference uh, title with Niagara. Had them in back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments. Now he comes to the Dukes and tries to do something they haven't really done in soccer. It's a relatively young program, just about 20 years old or so, and trying to get them to contend with some of the best. They play, obviously, this highest ranked opponent they've ever played here, number three in the nation in Pitt. They'll play Kentucky later this year, number 14 right now. Trying to challenge their team before they get to 8-10 play later in September. Loffel Zen, nice ball into the channel by Noel, lays it off, early ball played in, and out comes Dominic Nashimben to claim. And quick transition here by the Dukes. It's one thing Chase Brooks did say to us, Devin, we want to try to play a little more direct, a little more quickly at times, looking forward. They need to, especially with, just to double back for a second, more balance that he talked about with the willingness of Pitt to send their outside backs, and both at the same time with Crivello and Lafelsen both stepping. It's going to create an isolation on the back line for those two strikers against the two center backs. And you get support up through the middle as well. Wells header almost fell over to Luke Mort. Mort 15, local kid, Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Let's so take a look at Nishimben, the junior keeper from Australia. He was actually 11th in the nation last year. 4.86 saves per game. Played every minute for the Dukes in their seven games that they were able to play in the spring. The Atlanta 10 did not compete in the fall, as did most conferences in the country. Ryan Landry pressing high, finds Hopfer. Hopfer, good ball in, falls for Dragasic, and what a recovery by Loffelsen. Loffelsen looks a little worse for wear after that. Grad student from Cologne, Germany, on the deck still. Preseason second team All-American. Last year he was a second team All-American. This is not what you want to see if you're Jay Vidovich or any Panthers fan. Now it gets knocked on the backside of this. What a recovery it is by Loffelsen just to even get some sort of pressure, yet alone win the tackle. But how about the ball coming square across the 18? Dear Lord, that's some vision. Great overlapping run on the outside and just picking out the smallest amount of space outside the top of the box. Beautiful vision by Hopfer. Actually shocked with the amount of pace that was coming through in Dragasic and the beautiful touch that he had that Loffelsen was able to get stuck in there, but that's why he's your reigning defensive player of the year. And he's still laboring right now. 
As you see Tom Zabari, number six, one of the freshmen talking to him. This will be a long throw set up. Dragazic throws it in. And Sergio Gonzalez says that is a goal kick. Camputhano, the transfer from University of Portland. Last year was his first year with Pitt. Really helped solidify things at the back. Standing season, first team all ACC. You see Velko Pekovic now striding forward with space. He's got Mirkovic to his right, plays his fellow countryman. Off his end, looking a little better now. You got him down to 50%, he's still brilliant. Let's understand that. As good as he is at that outside back spot. Wise beyond his years, the German coming over. You can tell us played in the academy over a couple different academies in Germany. Didn't think he'd be able to become a pro. Was about to become an accountant. Decided that he could continue his education in the States. And that's one thing Jay Vidovich has done. He's pitched to young men all over the world. They've got a very international roster. And these young men that have had been highly trained at great academies then come over here and play in the best conference of college soccer, make the conference better, make some teams like Pitt, a program, turned it around quickly. That's the other thing you have to do in this day and age, Alan. There had to be an evolution from a recruiting standpoint because of the fact you're not just competing with other colleges, whether it's in your region or nationally. You're competing with the academies as well because they're grabbing those players, they're pushing them through, going the pro route, which is a great thing for the development of the game, but it also makes it slim pickings for guys at the collegiate level. This is still an area where development can be top-notch. It is. We see players coming out every single season, going to the pro ranks, not just drafted high, but making actual impact at the professional level and on the national stage for their countries. And you see that right there. Three Brazilians, Frenchmen, and Spaniards. Netherlands, Germany, Japan, Switzerland, England. This has become a mainstay for Jay Vidovich as he's built this program. Just for the reason you just outlined, Devin, it is a global game. The competition is global, and a lot of Americans are looking to play in academies, looking to go to USL, maybe get to MLS directly as young men, or even get to Europe in some academies. The collegiate route continues to be appealing. And if they go to the 21st century model, again, this year will only be played in the fall, but they will re-examine this in the spring. And if we get to the 21st century model, where they play fall and spring, and guys can actually train for 10 months of the year, these great facilities, with great coaches, great educational opportunities, it only makes the college game more appealing and more competitive understand that from a tactical standpoint as well coaches can actually dig into stuff it's so frustrating for these guys even chatting with both coaches coming into this game how difficult it is not just in the first match of the season but even when you get into 10 12 15 games it's compacted into such a small space down that you don't have time regularly to dive into what the next matchup is going to be it's taking care of your bodies finding experience for everybody and somewhere along the way maybe you can instill some tactical prowess in him, but that's not usually the case. It's survival of the fittest at this point in time. So right. Every coach last year, because the ACC was, well, there were a couple teams outside of other conferences, but the ACC played both the fall and the spring as Pitt moves forward here and Walty tries to get on that return pass. They played in both seasons. They were kind of the guinea pigs for this 21st century model, and every coach, outside of the stress of every morning, going to their training staff and saying, has anybody tested positive? That weighed on everybody, physically, mentally, emotionally, in these programs. But the one silver lining was it was a game a week. You got to play a game, train, prepare, work on your tactics, work on your technique. It was just a better environment for these young men to prepare, both in the fall and then the spring, and for coaches like Jay Vidovich and the rest of the ACC coaches to coach it. They all loved it, outside of the fact of the stress of the pandemic. Jack Manuel, the freshman, throw in from Erie, Pennsylvania. Good combination. Murkovich on the ball. Lopples in, tries the penetrating pass from Noel, who's making the run. Try to go All-American to All-American. Loose at the back here. Abelnadi couldn't get his head on it, but Ordonez cleaned it up.
Then quickly off the ground, knifing through from right back. He loves to get forward. He's fourth in the nation in assists last year with nine assists. And Loppelson says that was a professional foul because he thought Tom Zabari was beat. Sergio Gonzalez just going to issue a verbal warning. Nope, no, he's not. Here comes the yellow, first yellow of the match. Doing something right 15 minutes in, already getting parted. And after my heart. <laughs> <That's> a <great laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's, it's an ill-timed challenge. That's all it is. I'm actually quite surprised that he does pull the card out here because of the fact that it's so early on in the match. It's really the first offense. And even more so, if he gets through, there's still a ton of coverage behind him on the outside and on the inside from both center backs. Jaime Borjas just sitting just in front of him. A lot of times you'll see a referee let him play through. What? All played in. Maybe an opportunity. Falls to Ordonia is a big save by Nashim Ben. The junior from Spain almost opened his account on the season, but Nashim Ben stood tall. Jackson Walty. I give it a go. Great block coming out hard. Waffles end will chase it down. <laughs> Obviously, that early yellow card. Keep an eye on Sabari, number six in red. Last year, when these two teams met, there was a penalty. Bryce Washington scored at the senior that's no longer on the roster for Pitt. Move forward, playing Atlanta 2 in USL right now. But Jordy Lopez was hit with a second yellow in the second half and had to exit the game. They played the final 22 with 10 men. Don't want to see that repeat itself if you're a fan of the Dukes. That's the first pass, Mirkovic on it. Lays it off. Heavy touch, but an opportunity for Noel. Lays it out to Jack Hassan, 1 0. The Panthers are up, the Frenchmen connect. And the sophomore gets his first goal of the season, hooked up by the All American. There's the build we were talking about coming into the match, Dal, and the fact that they are so willing to slow this game down but strike with venomous intent when given the opportunity. And if it's not given, they'll take it. The combination play moving all the way to the byline. Watch the overlapping run. Beautiful triangular passing. It's just a drift off the right shoulder. Noel drops over. He knows the ball's gonna be right in front of him. And then it's unselfish. For an All-American who backed 14 goals last season, he could have easily gone one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Instead, draws him in, pulls the center back over, and puts it on a platter for the Panther to put in the bottom corner. They've been working on their sellies. Know that much. Jack Asson. The French connection there with Valentin Noel. And 1-0 in the 17th minute to the Panthers. We'll see how the Dukes respond. In all honesty, Devin, it's been a, they've played very well for a team that's very young so far in the first 15. You see how quick the Panthers can strike. About to say that 15 minutes into the match, really the best opportunity you had was coming off that set piece about two minutes prior. And for a team that was struggling in the build, patience. It truly was a virtue here for Pitt. And you could hear some of the shouts on the sideline from Vidovic just saying, calm, patient. But when you've got a team that you know you're supposed to run off the field, punching back at you in your home ground this early on, you get frustrated as a player. It's great to see them remain calm and just continue to go through the motions. I told you, stick to what you know best in these early matches, and especially in the early goings. That's where you're going to find success. Walty on the ball. I hope 
As you saw there, Pitt has won their last 10 matches here at Ambrose Panic Field. Nice ball again to Jack Hassan in space. Ball played in. Too close to the shin bend. Almost fumbled it right to Mort. Now he'll distribute quickly. Good control by Pekovic to Mirkovic. The two Serbians connect again. Now they're ticking. Don't get rattled here if you do, Kane. Just because you've conceded doesn't mean this match is over. And already the shape struggling after the goal. Everybody's starting to chase a bit more. Chase Brooks did tell us adversity's going to hit. It's a young team. How do we handle it? Last year when they went down 1-0 down to this Penn team, they handled it really well. He's proud of that. But they couldn't replicate it through the other games in the spring season. They've been tested early on in this one. Beautiful ball through. Again, just look at the vision by everybody. There's so many options for Pitt. That's one of the issues you get into. It doesn't matter if it's Duquesne, if it's Indiana in the semifinal, ACC championship against Clemson, win or loss, they always provide themselves so many different players and movements going forward. So it's not a one-off. You know, there's the ball coming down into the corner. Jackson with an opportunity to pick out the runner, but they've still got two trailing at the top of the 18. And for a three-back system that are trying to find a way to swing on the outside with their wing backs, you got to be oh so careful that you still have what's that word? Balance defensively down. Poor touch by Noel, but he cleans it up by picking the pocket. Good view. Mirkovic, New York City FC Academy product on the ball. Rivillo. Bordeaux Academy product, another Frenchman. Waffles in. He's in field connecting, leads it off to Pekovic. He can get a hit from there. Out to Jack Osson. Overlap from Previllo. Can he get there? Yes. Ball played in. Ooh, the Shinben had to still punch it over. on to take it. In swinging ball. Headed out. Hopfer wins the race. Battling now with Ordonez, center back. Let it trickle out. Could not retain possession. Settles it back to Walty. All over the top to Jack Asson. He can move, he's on it with room. Cuts it back. Dukes could be in trouble, lays it off. Nobody home. Three white jerseys there, found the middle of all of them. Well done by Walty. Good turn by Mirkovic. Out to Pekovic, he's got numbers in the box as the red jerseys ret retreat. Villa. Check this on. Chips it back post and up and a ship it gets a piece of it, falls, and Pekovic finishes. 2-0, the Panthers are up. And the number three team in the country is imposing its will on their crosstown rival.
There is a theme emerging here 23 minutes into the match, and it's the overload on the left-hand side for Pitt. Right around the 20-minute mark, two players on the far touchline for the Panthers, but six at the bottom of the screen. They get a half chance out of it. Rotate back around again. The touch-up over the bar that leads to the corner, and then third time's a charm. It's a simple little header, one off the back line, and then watch them go to work. Drop down into the pocket. Mirkovic finds the overlapping run on the outside, but here come the numbers again, and there's the patience. Gravillo, touch inside, they invert the outside back, and then look at it. The mismatch. It's 3v2, you get down into the corner, then just stick it into the mixer, and who's going to come off of it? Jackie stone has been so active the entire opening part of this game. And yes, it's off a deflection, but it's the beautiful movement and the final execution off the cross by or not. That is the beauty of Pitt. Pekovic scores his 16th career goal in a Panthers jersey. Put them up 2 0, 23rd minute. See if Duquesne can respond. Dragas. Valentin Noel. I haven't heard the first team All-American's name that much. Had that beautiful assist, but that's what makes this team special. They are talent up and down the roster. Waffles it just skips by. Looking in. Pekovic. Oh, are you kidding me? This is a clinic. What a finish with the flick dot header. Nothing the Shimbin was going to do with that. You couldn't place it better than that. Summer camp and school are over. We are 100% into the fall semester. And let's go to school. They don't overlap this time. It's a little inversion. We saw the three-man game down in the left corner. Let's go 2v1 on the right. Waffelsen. Puts it down in. How go to the triangular movements? This is training ground type stuff. You think it's a clinic, Dallin. I think it's an absolute master class what they are putting on right now. Brandon Franklin is on the ball right there. 14 and red. The freshman's going to want that one back. Los Laffles then skipped right by him, creating some problems down that right side. And Pekovic was the beneficiary. His second goal of the game in that many minutes. And Jobin. That's where they get you, though. They push, they pull. They ask so many different questions of you. You get different looks, too. Whether it's the first or the second or the third, it's similar in certain areas, but at the same point in time, just seconds prior on the goal, it talks about 90 seconds. You've got an inversion by your outside back that then turns into a secondary runner coming over. This time it's very traditional with Lafelsen, and you've seen him do it in 2020 so many times in 2021. He doesn't make that step. He's actually the distributor who waits to put that ball down into the channel, and then you just have to get a runner on the end of it. The problem for Pitt is going to be not who scores. It's how many are you going to put in the back of the net. You keep playing like this. Five, six, seven. It's beautiful stuff from Vidovic here in the first half. Sergio Gonzalez trying to get control of the game. Speaking of control of the game, Pitt scored three goals in seven and a half minutes. I'm not going to lie, man. There's some basketball games where I don't see three field goals in seven and a half minutes <laughs> in college. Ball plated, looking for Ardonez. Out comes Zach Mocha. We talked about him in the open. We have not seen much of 19 in red. Duquesne has not had a shot. Their only shot was in the fourth minute. Had an opportunity. It was a bad turnover by that man, Mohamed Abdul Nadi. But he did not pay for it in the end. Discuss the defensive duties that we saw out of Hopfer. He was the one who was a little bit more constant in terms of pressure, trying to cut off that pass right there. And they played through Jackson Walty. They've gotten much better at dropping in, giving more support in the midfield, but then also playing in that quick little one-two pass around each other from the outside. So when you go with the outside back, it's not just direct down into the corner. They're willing to step on it, circulate back through the middle. Very different from the opening 12 to 14 minutes for Pitt. They're finally finding to start all of them in combination. 
Been a good run for Pitt, no doubt. Been a good run for us in the ACC football road trip. We cap our 14 campus ACC football road trip this year at Clemson. We'll talk to Dabo Sweeney, of course, some of the top Tigers, as well as check out the amazing campus and unbelievable <laughs> facilities they have. It's not just a football facility, folks. That soccer facility is no joke that opened last year. Mike Noonan and crew get a full use of it this year. Comes to you tomorrow, 7 Eastern, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap, you heard. You been on the slide? I have been on the slide, the football <sighs> facility. All Quite by yourself? Level. I mean, it's one of those things where I'm, just, I'm not a very avid social media guy. It's like, is this one of these things that I just video and send? When you don't do it, it just seems weird. But I enjoyed it by myself. Good man. Good it's man. Like kid. That cafeteria there, too. Woo Doctor. Eat there for days. Pekovic steps into space. Oh, boy. Valentin Noel can't get there in time to shin bend off his line. Good recovery by the goalkeeper here. They're just so spread out on the back line. Borjas has to be better here. He's the central center back for Duquesne on the back line. And when Emmanuel and Franklin get that far off, you got to pull them back in. You cannot allow a simple ball like that to break you down, especially when you're basically in a 3v1 situation. Now, I'm not knocking Valentino Noel. He is a fantastic talent at the collegiate level, but you're making it really easy on him. You put five, six, seven yards in between you and your marking back. Those simple little balls are going to be on all day long. First team All-American last year, first team ace, All-ACC, Offensive Player of the Year in the SEC, Mac Herman Trophy finalist. He's one of the three finalists for National Player of the Year, the Mac Herman Award. As Duquesne tries to whip one into the mixer. Every accolade possible he had last year. And almost led his team to a championship match, but they may lead him to a big other opportunity here, three on two. He gets ridden off the ball, though. Well done by Ryan Mayhew. Oh, good you. Not in the end, though. Sergio Gonzalez, that's a foul. Think about the back side of that. From New South Wales, Australia disagrees. Think about the back side of the comment as they go in transition here, Dallin. It was the fact that that man right there, Valentin Noel, was basically eliminated from contention in that semifinal game. You removed your number one striker and you didn't have any support around him. And they just started to dissipate offensively. And I understand it's Duquesne, I get it. It's 30 minutes into the first game of the season, but this is what you want out of your boys. You wanna go out, set the tone early, and make everybody around go, okay, this team is for real. This team is supposed to be ranked in the top five again. They are supposed to win the ACC division and the whole darn thing. You don't wanna leave doubters on the table. Put those to rest, silence everybody early. Pitt has done that so far. And Jay Vitovich did say, you know, they weren't exactly pleased with their performance in that Indiana game, but in retrospect, when you look back at the season, what they accomplished, very pleased with the progress they made, how many great players they had, and then all these guys that had opportunities maybe to stay in the draft, in the MLS draft, or maybe try to go pro, chose to stay here. Chose to go one more run for Pitt to see if they could win the national title, and they're gonna be in that conversation. And to your point, Nice move, move by Sabari. It's, it's not going to be easy, and it is the first game. But you look up and down the ACC right now, a lot of teams are in battles right now. They're, they're imposing their will upon an opponent, and it's been impressive through 30 minutes. On that note, we have a break in action. Just give you a, VCU is up on the road at Wake Forest. Top 10 team in the nation, 2-0. Clemson's tied 1-1 with St. John's at home. No cakewalks. That ball's played in, and off comes Nico Camputhano. In the Apple Gnati. Collide. A little surprised this phrase all the way back through with had any pressure up top. At least the opportunity for him to step through, Jack Emanuel. All the white shirts, Camputhano off his line as well. There's another question mark for you, just like we saw the ball through on the back line. How does that spray all the way through? Sergio Gonzalez having a few words with Pekovic and Sabari. Sabari, of course, we keep saying another freshman. He's from Tel Aviv. 
Only played in one game in the spring last year due to some injuries, but now he's back and ready to go. Good Hugh, ready to play it in. The Australian Newcastle Jets Academy. Outswinging ball. Well played by Ordonez, and Jack Asson's able to get it out of immediate danger. Good Hugh can't keep it in. Pressing high, forced the turnover, almost. Walter ran out of real estate, but great move. And eventually bumped off the ball. Picked off by Mocha. Hop for to his right, but a lot of white jerseys. He'll give it a go. Deflected. Out for a corner. Duquesne showing signs of life. It's going to be a level of concern halftime for Vidovic and the fact that the opportunities that have come the way of the Dukes have been just poor giveaways coming off the backside, to be fair. You remember Albonati gave that first one up? Again, just so, so lethargic in terms of the pace of play coming out. Giving it right back to one of the boys up top. Do that against some of the better teams, your Clemsons, your Indianas. They'll make you pay. The Q lofts the in swing ball. Headed down, headed off by Ordonez. And we've got a player down with potential head injury. I mean, Bor Borges was down. Borges was down. Take a look. Center back from Bogota, Colombia. Transferred from Graceland U, which was an NAIA school. After two seasons here at Duquesne. Clash of heads with Abulnadi. real close to the top of the 18 to be in a handball as well. Watch this thing jump up. Easy fella. Easy off the light hand. Left hand, excuse me, extended away from the body. Unfortunately for Duquesne, he had already blown the play dead. Obviously head injury, you want to be oh so careful. Your center back getting knocked down here. Got to check on him right away, but right there. It's not inside the box. So it wouldn't have been a pen anyway. See Duquesne players complaining about it, but ball was blown dead previously, so we are underway. Played back to the Shimben. Just over 32 minutes gone in our match here from Pittsburgh. Ambrose Urbanic Field alongside Devin Kerr. I'm Dallin Cuff. 3 0 to the number three team in the nation. The first 15 minutes of the game. They had zero shots. In the next 16 minutes, they had seven shots, three goals. Three of those goals in seven and a half minutes came quickly. As they took control, you take a look at some of the scores around the ACC. St. John's and Clemson. Clemson, the top 10 team, number six. Battled up with the team from Queens right now. 1-1. Wake Forest, this is going to be the shocker. BCU up 2-0. Another Atlantic 10 team. That's where the conference Duquesne is in. And Wake Forest down 2-0 at home. Long throw in, looking to flick it on. Walty tries to get out of dodge. And that's a VCU team that's not, wasn't picked in the top three even of the A-10. The A-10 was Fordham, St. Louis, and Dayton in the top three, putting in quite a performance. Uh, bouncing around. Duquesne had a better spell of possession in the last few minutes. Tom Sabari, who's on a yellow card, came out that last whistle. 25 million screen in red. Harper Cook is inserted, Pittsburgh product. Came to the Riverhounds Academy, went to American University, transferred there after two years. They do a couple of NCAA tournaments with his time down in D.C. Rivillo settles, plays it up to Jackasuk. Great touch to keep it in play, and he's on the run. 
1v1 on the left side. He loves it over there. Keeps it in play. He's got Crivello with a low to space. Early ball, looking back post to overhit it. Ate his Wheaties this morning, didn't he? Some kind of shift he's putting in. Beautiful runs on this left-hand side. And which is a little touch. How is it? It's pretty good, actually. First game of the season. Don't mind if you do. I like the little cutback, though. Even when he's locked down in the corner, he still has the understanding that no matter what, someone will be there. Jackson Walty really good at sliding out of the midfield to help out, of course, the Serbians and Pekovic and Mirkovic coming over to help. Always an option there for moving back to front. By the way, I noticed you didn't mention the North Carolina score, and maybe to tell Pet Boys that watch out for that goal differential. They're up 5 0 at half. Easy. <laughs> you Easy see the other team, the other ACC team that got themselves to the College Cup last year. Somewhat unexpectedly, very defensively minded crew. Alex Smur is a uh, preseason third team All American, the goalkeeper for the Tar Heels, and they are in control of that game against Bucknell. 5 0, they're up. Bucknell next takes on Wake Forest on Sunday night. We'll be on the call for that match again here in ACC Network. We were spoiled with goalkeepers, weren't we? I just realized that. You looked at yeah. who was there. Smur, Celentano from Indiana, Ali Semla from Marshall. There's another giveaway. Yeah, maybe an opportunity. Hopper can't get on it. Well read by Ordonez. Abelnati's put himself under some stress a couple times in this match and turned it over in a bad spot. He transferred from Notre Dame. Pinged out, to, pinged out to Lopples in. Walty decides to get it out of Dodge. Fly on the wall for that conversation at halftime. His center back and what hasn't exactly been the greatest performance on the back line. Looking to play it forward. Jordy Lopez, number nine, has checked into the game for the, du the Dukes. In place of Maxi Hopfer. Another freshman. But Lopez did play in that game back in February, as you mentioned. He early enrolled and played. He was the young man, number nine, right in the middle of the screen, that got the second yellow in the 70. Second minute had to, excuse me, fourth minute had to exit the stage right. Jackson again in acres of space. Can he touch it by? Couldn't get it by Borjas, and he's down hard. Again, you do not want to see that. This young man grew up in the Strasbourg Academy, a league on team in France. Sophomore here, freshman of the year in the ACC. He opened the scoring tonight. 17th minute goal hooked up by Valentin Noel. These balls being sprayed through are definitely troublesome for the Dukes. It is a good job by Borjas recognizing that Jack Emanuel just gets turned around once again. Landry doesn't have the opportunity to drop down in and help out. And there is your center back coming all the way back across. Said that he needed to do a better job of keeping that back three in check. But sometimes you just got to step up and do it yourself. Mirkovic dinks it over to Walty. Knocked out to Lafazen. Noel on it. A little pocket of space. Nobody's closing him down, and he just didn't read where Pekovic is making the run. And Sergio Gonzalez blows the play dead. Gonna have a few words with Walty. Good to see fans back in the stands, near capacity here at Ambrose Urbanic Field. Good stuff going on at Pitt, great stuff going on at Miami. Part two of the series, all access of Miami football team is your unprecedented behind the scenes look into Manny Diaz and the Hurricanes program as they prepare for the season. There's more footage and sounds from practice, workouts, scrimmages, and other team related activities. Part two, Wednesday, 8 Eastern, Right here on ACCN and the ESPN app, you can always catch part one encores 
Wednesday, 7 Eastern, or anytime you want on the ESPN Plus. I was down there, Devin, in Miami on Monday doing a, a show here for ACCN. We were doing our road trip show down there. And the all-access crew, they are fully embedded. They've been down there now for 30 days. Real bad gig. You know, south, south you know, southern Florida, hanging out in Coral Gables and South Beach for 30 days. Brutal. But they got so much great stuff, and that program has opened themselves up to them. And I cannot wait to see part two of that. Part one was awesome. Does that mean I'm going to have to start bowing down to my hurricane buddies once again? They play Alabama in the opening of the season opening on September game. 4th. So I don't know if we're going to jump to that conclusion, but uh, <laughs> they can keep that competitive. De'Ara King's a Heisman candidate. A lot of talented and veteran teams, veteran guys coming back on that team. We'll see. They can give the Crimson Tide a run for their money. And distribution picked up out of the back. Maybe an opportunity here. Mocha can't get on it. Capitano. Rivillo. Mirkovic stepping into space. Rivillo head up. Dummy by Jack Asson trying to leave it for Noel, but well read by Borjas. Cheeky touch by Goodhue. Square good he was able to get on it. As always, get the latest news and information from the ACC each morning with special guests from the world of sports. Packer and Durham, Wednesday, 7 a.m. Eastern on ACCN, the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Pull up a chair, as they say, Devin Kerr, every morning at 7 a.m. Eastern. Remember when 7 a.m. was early? <laughs> Seem, that seems like an eternity ago, dude. That, 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 it is an eternity ago. <laughs> Listening to your schedule. Or maybe Waffle we'll send is no. down right now. We'll see what happened here. The second team All-American from last year, preseason second team All-American this year. Down again. He was holding his leg earlier in a great recovery. And here you see, oh, yeah, Jay arm. Da just checked into the game. Next with an elbow right to his head. Freshman from W and J, getting a piece of the German. Da played at W and J. It's a school, three, Division three school, about 30 minutes from the Berg. Used to go to basketball camp there all the time. My man Tom Ryder used to run the program. The late great Tom Ryder, but uh, he had a great career there. Uh, Jaden Da, shortly he was Player of the Year in the conference, the President's Conference. Gets a chance to move up to the A10. Waffles end is up, not looking great, but he's all right. Jack Manuel picked off by Walty. More trouble potentially coming. Pekovic on a brace, two goals. Laid out the other goal scorer. Jack Casson, heavy touch though. Borjas again comes over to clean it up. I'll give them this. Duquesne, they are sticking to what they want to do. Chase Brooks talked about that. Asked him, you know, how deep does it take for you to get into a season where you can really start adjusting yourself and, and tactically preparing for the opposition? He said, to be honest, we don't really reach that point anymore. We touched on it a little bit down about 20 minutes in, how it's so difficult because of the current structure for the collegiate season, 21st century model can change that. The other side of that argument is, if you're good or even great at what you do, make the other team change, right? Make the other squad on 
the opposite end of the field to react to you as opposed to trying to prepare about what's in front of you. Just be the best that you can be. And it sounds a little bit cliche, but truly at this level, two, three good looks at something, just repeat it over and over again. We saw that about 10 minutes spell for Pitt. Bodies everywhere right now. It's Crivello. Crivello and Landry collide. You had if Jordy Lopez down to the middle of the pitch as well. I think Sergio Gonzalez, Sergio Gonzalez is going to call for attention. Here's Lopez saying, I just took an elbow in the middle of the pitch, and the captain Landry is down. Third or fourth stoppage in this first half for a head injury. Ooh. There's another contact on the inside. I mean, Jaden Da, a near touchline a second again. There's another one. Easy, boys. I mean, Easy. 45 Crivello. minutes in. Yeah, a lot of a lot of arms. Now there's not much you can do when you jump. Your arms are up, gonna move up with momentum. But Oof. and there is no VAR technically in college soccer, but some instances you can review, and it's disciplinary matters. If for some reason Sergio Gonzalez thought that was malice in that, he could review that and issue a card. Can't review penalties, can't review offsides, you can't review a goal if it crosses the goal line. Disciplinary matters like this, mistaken identity. And if you're new to college soccer, you see the score is, the clock is stopped. We go up to 45 minutes and that's it. Middle official can stop the game, stop the clock. There is no stoppage time or injury time. And again, these are the instances when you can have a review only initiated by the F referee, whether a goal has been scored, whether it's crossed the line, identity for players in a disciplinary manner, and then determining discipline because of a fight or other incident on the field. by Mort. Mikovic on the turn. Gets it to Mirkovic. Good control. He's got options in front. Lays it to Noel, but Borjas, who's done quite a job in the last few minutes of reading the game, intercepts the pass. Big fella Jaden Doc couldn't control it. Cloggett enters the game for Jasper Loffelsen. We've seen Loffelsen hit the deck a couple times. Cloggett coming in. Sopo from Atlanta. Took part in the Atlanta United Academy. And Jay Vidovich lauded him to us the other day. Said he, he really likes what he brings. He's got the mind to go forward. He reads the game well. He's technically talented and very athletic. But it's hard when you're playing behind Jasper Loffelsen. It's like a team All-American, but we'll see Cloggett get in the game now. I do like the fact that Vidovic isn't afraid to go to his bench. It doesn't matter what you've done all season long. Obviously, you earn your shirt and you're going to get the start, but you're not playing well. He's more than happy to start to drop down into his troops and give somebody else an opportunity. Claggett is one of them. A lot of talent there. We give the pedigree to all the guys on the field right now. Remember, nine of the 11 started in that semifinal against Indiana Hoosiers, and they lost one nothing. But whether it's 3-0 in the first match of the season or a 0-0 draw, 10, 12 games in, he's going to give you your shot. Mm -hmm. And the countdown is on. Mm -hmm. 3-0 at the break. The Panthers in control against their crosstown rivals. I 
That was the first goal scorer, Bertan Jacasson. Falco Pekovic had second and third. We are working it out. We'll be back, though, with a preview of the ACC after this. And from Ambrose Urbanic Field here in Oakland, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Dallin Cuff. The hometown number three team in the nation, the Panthers are up 3 0. A Bertan Jacasson goal, the sophomore reigning freshman of the year in the league put them up 1 0. Velko Pekovic, talented junior, second team all league player, has added two goals. And that's where we stand right now. Brandon Cloggett on the ball. He stays in the game for Jasper Loffelson. Jackson Walty to play it forward. His pass a little wayward. It's controlled by Adiak and Jobin. Jaime Borjas, heavy touch, put him in trouble under pressure, and then he pass off the mark. There's Jasper Lopelzen, we mentioned, the uh, second team All-American last year. He took a shot to the head. He's icing his forehead, shot to the back of the leg. Early in the game was nil-nil. He made a big time late saving tackle. Taking a couple shots. We'll see if he actually comes back in the game. But clog at the bottom of your screen, number 12. Coach Vidovich is excited about him getting him some more minutes. Jackson on. Walty's pass off the mark. Naughty, the transfer of Notre Dame, brings it down back to Arturo Donez. Philip Mirkovic. Nice flick on by Noel to Jack Asson. He's got numbers in the middle. That's almost a return ball. Excuse me, that's Pekovic and Jack Asson connecting. And Noel was making the near post run. Luke Mort wanted this on the back stick. One of the things they've gotten so good at, Pitt, and it was towards the end of last season and has obviously funneled over here into the first match, is the double pivot in the midfield where they don't just rely on Jackson Walty as the holding six. It's a little one-two punch now. Curled in, header, woo! Almost was flicked on and Ordonez was trying to track it down. Set piece opportunities in the first half, about 20 minutes in, is what got this team back on track. Is that what's going to be the kickstarter here to the second half? It's a teasing ball in. Jack Manuel, the freshman, is able to get his head on it. Pakovic in Springer, back post header, goal! Ordonez, the junior from Spain. The center back with a towering header. Off a great delivery from Pekovic. He was on the receiving end of the ball, played in the first time from Jacques on the other corner. Didn't want to make that run all the way to the other side, Jacques He said, go ahead, boys, whip it in for me. Ordonez and Abelnati struggled in the first half in terms of distribution, trying to make amends for that performance. Give Vidovic something to think about. Just a big frame, drifts off the back shoulder, six foot two, and every inch of him sticking this into the back of the net. What a header. Junior from Spain has started every match he's played in for Pitt. 39 for 39 now. And gets his fourth career goal to put them up 4-0. Third team, all ACC center back. This team is littered with all ACC players. And that really means something. As you know, this is the best conference in college soccer. Last year, they had 10 all-conference honorees, including Coach of the Year and Jay Vidovich. Take a look at 
with some of the of the year rewards they got. They pretty much swept him. Offensive player of the year, midfielder of the year, went to Daniel Pereira from Virginia Tech. Defender of the year went to Jasper Loffelson. Coach of the year to Jay Vidovich. Freshman of the year went to Bertrand Jacques So four of the five. Again, 10 overall individual honorees, whether that be all ACC teams or all freshman teams. Jay Vidovich leading his sixth <laughs> ACC Coach of the Year award. Exactly. I go on forever, man. It was a it oh, was man. an amazing season for the Panthers last year. Spent seven weeks at number one in the polls. And these guys came back on a mission, though. They they still they did lose in the semifinal to Indiana in a manner which they didn't think they represented themselves or quitted themselves as well as they should have. So they're gonna look to be back trying to get back to carry North Carolina again in early December. My favorite thing about the understanding of that match from Vidovich was two real takes. Number one, took responsibility. A lot of coaches aren't that brutal on themselves in saying, look, we just weren't good enough on that day. We were good enough over the year, but that day we got a lot of things wrong, and he took responsibility for it. I was impressed by that. More importantly, I loved his response when I asked at what point in time last year, whether just before the final, Final Four, excuse me, or just after, did you guys have an understanding of who was going to come back? And he said, to be honest, we knew well before. We knew that these guys were all going to come back no matter what happened. And you see Chavinovich's reaction to Compufano, the first team all league keeper, going walkabout. As any great coach will tell you, it's not necessarily about the result, it's about the performance. He said at halftime he's not quite pleased with it at this point. A little extracurriculars here. <laughs> Maxi Hoppers, give me that rock. Good handoff. Nice baton bass, boys. You took it like Debo takes Red's chain. My grandma might give you that chain. Just pinged back and forth. Not exactly the corner execution you want. Jackasson again behind that part of the defense. Running free as he cut it back. Tries to. Try to lay it off of Pekovic, but Redwell. Uh, no. Luke Moore trying to dink it over the top of Brandon Franklin. He cannot. Franklin plays it off of Moore. Well done to maintain possession for the Dukes. in the inside for Pitt. Jackson Walty and Kulimirkovic doing a much better job as the game has gone on playing off of each other. It's not just the options that you provide your running partner right next to you. It makes it almost seamless to go side to side. And more importantly, provide yourself the depth as you can step forward, find someone like Pekovic or a play off of. And it also pulls the inside of Duquesne really out of its shape. Dragasic, Goodhue, Safari, all involved. And another little challenge. It is quite interesting how slow they are in certain areas of the field pit. And it was up 2 0, up 3 0, up 4 0, and yet there's this little switch that just flips off for a second down, and then all of a sudden, Duquesne able to go the other direction. How 
do you how do you fix that? What's the problem? Is just being lazy with the ball, not moving it, not thinking quick enough? Like what is the what is the issue they need to address here before they play WVU next? The first one is it's the first game of the season. Mm -hmm. People at home are going to smirk at that, but but it is. It's it's basically still their preseason. You know, some of these guys, you know, it's eight, 10, 14, 15 days, depending on the school. That's not a lot of time. Now, I understand for Pitt, it's a little bit different because they've been together for so long. But even then, a short time frame, whether you're on campus or not, you're not playing, you're not training like you normally are. So you come back in and you go through the motions a little bit. Those fluid movements that I talk about for them, although we've seen glimpses, the 90-minute performance is going to escape them for a while. Now the question is, is can you escape your opposition in that process? Pekovic flicks it over to Noel, return pass. Oh, beautiful ball, Noel's 1v1, and he scores! Nutmeg on the Shimbin! Beautiful combination play between Pekovic and Noel. Pekovic has now got two goals, two assists. And Noel gets his account open for the year as well. Last year's Mac Herpin Trophy finalist. Looking to get back to that point, maybe win the whole thing. Five to. Here's another one of those glimpses. Watch everybody. Absolute perfection. Noel's the point man. He's the finisher. He's everything you want him to be. Ball comes in, little touch over the right. Petkovic sees the run coming back through. How about up top two? Splits the backside. That's a great run by Luke Moore. He's not going to get credit here. He's in an offside position at the end. But as he peels inside, he opens up the initial space. Noel comes through. Five hole on the goalkeeper and five on the night for Pitt. Valentin Noel was second in the nation in total goals last year with 14, ninth in goals per game. Of course, Pitt did play most goal, more games than just about anybody in the country because they played in the fall and spring. He is picking up where he left off as Ryan Goodhue comes in the game for Nathan Dragozic. on the ball, unintentionally connects with Jaden Da, bumps back to him. Hopper, good control by Goodhue. Cross leaves wanting that. Pitt now with five goals, that's the most goals in a season opener since they drilled Bucknell 5-1 back in 2000. And maybe now see some guys get some, some more action here as Sito Senna comes on, the senior. Comes in for Arturo Donez and Senna has had an up and down career, unfortunately. In 2018, he led the team in minutes played. It was a real rock for this squad, but 19 and 20, he's had so many injury issues, couldn't really get back on the field that much. But here he is now, getting back in the mix, and hopefully he can stay healthy, the senior from Spain. Good pedigree, played at Valencia, Real Madrid, Villarreal, all La Liga teams and their academies growing up. And now over here in Pitt, and he's on the ball now. Jacassin over the top. Wells trying to get back on side. Jacassin may do it himself. And the Shimben with the save. Some kind of save by the goalkeeper to the near post. Watch a little cutback across the body. Great explosion of speed by Jacassin. Scott Noel on the inside if he wanted. Villo trying to turn. Knocks it back out. Walti on it. Walti on it. 
Jack Asson in space again, looking back, trying to find Pekovic, who's on a hat trick potentially. Good Hugh out quickly. Tries to play it over the top to Landry, but Campitano out, no sweeper keeper. It will tell you about our All Access in Miami. Part two of the series, All Access at Miami football team is your unprecedented behind the scenes look into Manny Diaz and the Hurricanes program as they prepare for the season. There's more footage and sounds from practice, workout scrimmages, other team related activities. Part two, Wednesday, 8 Eastern, right here in ACCN and the ESPN app. You can always catch part one. Their encore will be Wednesday, 7 Eastern on ACCN or anytime you want on ESPN. Plus. Great series. Our All Access team has been embedded for about a month now. Tons of great footage. The Miami program has really opened stuff up. So definitely check it out. And of course, the Hurricanes start their season against number one defending champs, Alabama, on September 4th. Pretty interesting tactically from Pitt the fact that Esper Loffel's in there. All American steps off. Bring Brandon Cloggett in, We're pushing him really high, and the balance that you had on the right and left in the first half was more so turned into just the right flank, really attacking next to Luke Mort, creating a, a very interesting back three. And get to the point, now comes the left back really high. Kovic tried to dink it over to Jack Hassan, did not come off. Crivillo applies pressure. Opportunity may fall for Noel. Tries a little chip of the keeper, but Nishimbin was there. It's a pretty big ask for him to bring this all the way back across because it was closed out. Goalkeeper's on the near post. You've got center back over the left shoulder. Close the runner down. No one on the back post for Pitt. Pitt with their fifth corner of the match. They just scored off their last. Ordonez on the other side from Pekovic. This time Jacasson in swinger. Falls out. Senna. Oh, placement pretty! Patience and precision from the senior. Sito Senna. Fifth goal of his career. Battled through so many injuries, but you see the class right there. The calm demeanor that has been pit all night long funnels over into the substitute who used to be the mainstay on the back line back in 2019, a fateful night versus North Carolina that has thrown him off from injuries, fighting his way back ever since, but smooth on the left foot. Touch back across, shielded the goalkeeper as so many bodies in front of him that as he sticks this into the far post, hard to read. He'll take it any way that he can get it. Sixth time in his career for Sito Senna. And that was pretty. See those disparate. Couple touches. Putting it perfectly in the back of the net. 6-0 Pitt is up over Duquesne. When these two teams met back in February, Pitt escaped with a 1-0 win through a penalty. This looks like a different, wholly different game right now. Just a heads up, still one behind in goal differential. Thought you should know that North Carolina put a seventh spot up on Bucknell. So still chasing, still chasing another squad. Just got to keep Carolina. it up to date, that's all. Was it a 7-1 final, I believe, we have in North Carolina? We'll get, we'll get you the latest on that and a couple other scores. No, it is seven, right, 7 nil against Bucknell. So, yeah, one behind a goal difference. And we've got 29 minutes to go here as Alexander Dexter checks in for Bertin Jacasson. And this is where the embarrassment of riches they have. Dexter's a grad student that's put up second all-time in assists. And now you have Guilherme Feitosa comes in from Brazil. And Feitosa is a guy that, freshman, and I know 
Coach Vitters told us how excited he is about this young man and what he might be able to bring. As we see him grow into the college game. All played in. Cleared out by Walty. Tosa on the ball, springs it wide. There's Dexter. A lot of subs, you see number 20 in the game as well. Matt Bailey, grad student. So Sam Cow comes in for Valentin Noel as the bench is being cleared now, giving a lot of young players some playing time. The freshman from Richardson, Texas, Sam Cow. Tosa on the ball. He's taken over that sixth position, that central defensive midfielder role. As he came in from Muhammad Abdul Nadi, and there's Jackson Walty. He dropped into a center back role. Two guys playing a little bit different parts of the pitches than they normally do. See, we're cycling through some scores there. Virginia takes down Western Michigan 2-1. Virginia Tech and Kansas City go to double, go to double OT, and that's how it ends in a 2-2 draw. Virginia Tech's 15th in the nation. This is the surprising one. VCU on the road beats Wake at Spry Stadium. That doesn't happen very often. This is a young Wake team. We will be talking to Bobby Moose, to Moose tomorrow uh, as they get ready to take on Bucknell on Sunday. That's college soccer right there. Not much rest for the weary. They'll be back on ACCN. I believe that's a 7 o'clock kickoff. Devin, check me on that because clearly I don't know game times. Not my, not my strong suit. <laughs> well, you want me to handle your schedule now too? <laughs> I think I do. Somebody has to because I can't do it. Alongside Devin Kerr, I'm Dallin Cuff here. Just over 65 minutes, this pit team has controlled this game. Matt Bailey off and running now. I mean, Borjas, despite giving up six goals, he's had a pretty good day. The center back for the Dukes. Clemson did come back to beat St. John's 2-1. They were down 1-0 at historic Riggs Field, but they battled back. make this many changes can you maintain the same sort of quality that we've seen the entire match Vidovich trying to find a way to really make sure that down the stretch of games whether it be conference game come tournament time or trying to make another run at the college cup that no matter the position he has the luxury of saying next man up obviously he likes to stick to the big guns we know that and rightfully so they're so good at maintaining Really, a high quality of play an entire match without a lot of rotation. But we're not going to be around forever. The difference in shots tonight, a team that was much more effective and proactive going forward. And Jay Vidovich should say last last season when they got they started slow in the spring. In the fall, they got to the ACC championship game, they lose to Clemson. Maybe guys were feeling themselves a little bit when they got to springtime. 
1-0 win against Duquesne. They got beat up against Carolina. You can see the three goals. That helped kind of get the light bulb to go off on their head. They got to show up every day. They started getting it going the other direction and ended up in the College Cup. Alan, you double back to our conversation just at the start of the second half, some of the sloppiness. And you asked me, how do you change it? One of the things you have to understand is that this team has already been battle tested a little bit. I'm saying that very lightly because of their exhibition so far. But it's important. Ask Jay Vidovich about what those exhibitions have been like. Robert Morris said it's yin and yang. Good control. Pretty much bossed the entire match, his verbiage. And that it was a great exercise for them, that they led from start to finish. It's good to be in control of a match, but that Maryland asked a lot of questions of them. So when you have a team that's used to being on the ball, they go score some goals, that builds your confidence. Then you come out the next time against, I don't care who's on the field, any team coached by Sasha Sarovsky is going to be a team that's going to give you a dogfight. So they push you in two different directions. That gives you the confidence, whether early on or not, that you can go out and put together a quality performance. Now can you follow it up? You bag six. There's 20 minutes to go. You know that the rest is going to be quick. Everybody that's on the field right now wants to make sure that Vidovich thinks about them, not just the 11 that started this match. Remember, nine of the 11 started the semi against Indiana. Throw your name in the hat. Give me a look. I understand that I wasn't on the team sheet to begin with in one of the first starting 11, but how about me? Look at the rotation that he's given all the players. Balti onto the back line, Youngster, Faitosin in the midfield, and still they're willing to build back to front. And you mentioned Maryland. They're not in their typical top 25, top 10 team this year, but that is a program that expects to win, demands to win, and has talent. So. Uh, when they went down there to College Park, that pit team got tested, and they definitely, Jay Vinovich said, learned something from them. There's Anthony Harding, 27, the redshirt sophomore, getting his head on the ball. He's back on it now, stepping forward. Looking for Sam Cowell. Cloggett getting forward from his right back spot. Mirkovic, one of the few starters still in the match for the Panthers. Vitosa, out wide to Dexter. Dexter driving end line. This is one of the, he started the majority of the matches last year. Him coming off the bench now, not majority, sorry, he started 19 of 20 games last year. So him coming off the bench is a different situation for him. I'm sure he's trying to get out and prove some, prove a point, second in the, program and assist in his career, 18. Moved in, almost found Dexter. A little bit difficult here for Duquesne, trying to find the runners on the inside. That's where Pitt really struggled early on, but as the match has gone on, maybe got away with a little bit of a handball there. All the runners on the inside, it goes from, very quickly I might add, this stagnant back four willing to go slow, all of a sudden you're overloaded with five in the middle, and two out of the three of the boys up top drop down in. It's hard. I've seen a bunch of guys for Chase Brooks come into the interior tonight, and just kind of like the face you see right now looking at the referee, <laughs> Mac and Jobin, you're looking around going, where's my runner coming from? because there are so many different options. This is a pretty good look at it right now. Look at all the white jerseys on the inside, and then quickly they fan out, but then they spread again. It's at a moment's notice. Everybody of the understanding that your position isn't the only one that matters because you occupy so many different spaces. Claudette steps up high, turns himself into an outside midfielder. All of a sudden, Mirkovic starts to drop in. He makes himself one of those holding midfielders. That's a different look that I talked about, and then the next thing you know, you're one of the midfield three, but you're looking at seven different runners, looking at six and sevens, trying to figure out where your mark's coming from. Opportunity for Bailey. Flashing near post. Oh 
grad student, UMBC transfer. Matt Bailey was all freshman team in the America East before coming here to Pitt. To my point, though, there comes the overlapping run by Anthony Harding. Dexter just waits, and that's the back post run of Matt Bailey, who comes all the way to the near side. 25-yard run. When you're expecting one of those outside boys, that ball to be lofted to the back post and sends a streaking ball down on the ground just outside the top of the six. Very impressive for Pitt. It's very difficult for Duquesne to catch all the runners. Bailey tries to get turn and get the shot off. Tosa pings it out. Log it on it. Walty still in the game. Tries to connect with Rodrigo Almeida, a junior from Salvador, 11 and white. over the dead ball. Put in the Shinben off his line, he claims it. Quick restart. Ball played through, opportunity for Jordy Lopez, but the recovery, well done by Harding. Pit up 6-0 in this game. You see last season, their goal differential plus 28, second Division I. They did trounce a number of opponents, and that's just a testament to the offensive talent they have. Them. It's a relative who's who at the top 10. However, let's play a little trivia. Do you know who number one was? Ooh. I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's, it's another cat. cat. It's another cat. It's um, another cat. Kentucky. Not even in the top 10. You, I mean, this cat thing threw me off. All right, who we I'll got? Give, I'll give you another hint. They're not that high up. It's in the name. It's all in the name. They're not that high up. I don't know. My brain doesn't have this. We're doing this live on air. I got no answer. What do you have? That's high point. Almeida. Okay. Oh, opportunity almost connects in the end. Well, Sam Cow, the freshman, wanted to get his first goal in Panthers uniform. And it's that same again. Same again. This is going to be a fun one on this left-hand flank with Alex Dexter. What it looks like going forward, whether or not he's fully healthy for a guy that has been so instrumental for Jay Vidovich over his tenure. Heavy, heavy. Good Jordan. Played out by Jordy Lopez. Again, again, again. What is the high point? What is High Point's mascot? I can't think. Are they Panthers? They're the Panthers. Absolutely cat thing. I was stuck on the Wildcats. No good. I'm still disappointed <laughs> in myself. Well, defensively, they were ridiculous. They only gave up nine goals last year. So it doesn't hurt. <laughs> and swinging ball by Almeida. Opportunity. Feitosa. A couple Brazilians trying to connect. Couldn't keep it down, though. As you mentioned, the ACC men's soccer season got underway today. Ten teams in action. Five teams are in the top 25 entering the season, which actually is kind of low. Normally you see seven or eight 
in the top 25. Virginia Tech 2-2 draw. The shocker across the country is going to be Wake Forest, losing 2-0 at home to BCU. Clemson came from behind to beat St. John's 2-1. And North Carolina manhandled Bucknell. Let's not get greedy. They're still four in the top ten. <laughs> it's true, but I mean, hey, maybe I've the it is the best conference in college soccer. Usually, it's just by a wide margin, but it may end up being that way as teams start to play and start to see some of these teams in action more. Michael Sullivan has checked in for Philip Mirkovic. You were keeping track. Pitt has officially changed every position on the field now. Understanding that obviously Walty is one of the ones that did change, but literally every other position on the field has been substituted. That's not depth, that's just rude. <laughs> Dexter settles. Pitt at home hasn't conceded a goal in over 440 minutes. See if they can get that up to my math thing good with 455 by the end of this thing. <laughs> I was told there'd be no math. Duquesne this they carry good shape you know they they're really struggling with rotation but the principles that Chase Brooks talked about where you know we want to be the best that we can be the best version of us they're sticking to that you know you want to argue talent level and execution that's another story but the shape that they had last year he said just a little bit more mature better decision making and carry that over the course of an entirety of a match don't necessarily know that until the he starts to play out a bit further. Makes another change. Luke Pepperack coming in for Louis Samkow. Pepperack, freshman, local kid, went to Connellsville High School, part of the Riverhounds Academy as well. His brother played here as well, graduated 19, men's soccer player. Excuse me, sophomore Luke Pepperack, apologies. Dexter stepping forward, able to maintain possession. Pepperack getting his first touch, Almeida. Skips out of some trouble. Sullivan. And he runs out of real estate. I'd like to see a little bit more out of Fetosa in the midfield. See Ryan Langey struggling. They call, he's the only senior on the roster. Again, this pit team, 23 out of 31 players are underclassmen. Call him the grandfather. It's his sixth year at Duquesne. Great leader, leads by example. Tough guy. Struggling on the sidelines. Hope he's okay. Watching some football here. American football about to get underway here. Week zero. And we cap our 14 campus ACC football road trip this year with a stop at Clemson. We'll talk to Davo Sweeney and some of the top Tigers. We'll check out that amazing campus, amazing facilities they have. It comes to you tomorrow, 7 Eastern, right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Yeah. We always talk about the Clemson football facility, which you'll be able to see tomorrow, 7 o'clock. If you haven't seen it, it is quite a sight to behold, from the slide to the weight room, biggest weight room in the country to the cafeteria, to the video game space, but the men's soccer facility is tremendous as well. Jaden Don tries to dance around. Clemson's facilities overall are outstanding across all sports, and the men's facility, just a soccer facility, just opened last year. Couldn't use it. Mike Noonan's crew couldn't get in there as a team all the time because of COVID, but now it's 
becoming a bit of a different situation, or it was at least over the summer. Chance to really maximize that. Fans will be back in the stands too. A number of different venues. We saw them in historic Riggs Field last spring. We're now seeing them back here at Ambrose Urbanic Field in Pittsburgh. Panthers up next. Take a look at their schedule. We've got WVU coming up. They got to go backyard brawl on the road to Morgantown. And that's on uh, August 30th. You can watch that on ESPN Plus. They'll take on Lehigh. They'll go at Akron. Akron's not as good as it once was. Still a quality program, but used to be one of the national powerhouses. And then it gets real. September 10th on ACCN Extra. That is when. Their ACC season commences with the other highest ranked team in this conference right now, North Carolina. You saw Penn State there, then Wake, then Clemson. That is four top teams, teams in the top 11 in four consecutive games. That is a tough run. That's a statement, one way or another. Yeah. You're going to find out exactly what you're made of through that gauntlet you're about to run. Yep, four games, 15 days against ranked opponents. That is a tough stretch, but that's also sometimes just life at ACC. And you mix in a Penn State game there, too, no joke. Jeff Cook's done a really good job of turning that program around. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of the football faithful, Christian Hackenberg, his brother, Brandon, actually just named a team captain. Sito <laughs> Senna on the ball. The senior came in, scored a goal. Beautiful goal at that. Matt Bailey pressing, turns the turnover, and they'll pull it back. Sergio Gonzalez was letting it roll for advantage, and then there was no advantage, he felt. Just hoping that this is tired legs on the back end of it. It was a weird little turn on the ankle for Borjas, hoping that he's not hurt. He's been very active on that back line. And again, you can, you can be critical of either one of these squads. Of course, it's easy to look at the score line, 6 nothing, and just talk pit, pit, pit. But at the same time, they've been sloppy in certain areas. But to his credit, Borjas, a lot of responsibility. He's probably cut that off by another two or three goals just on his lonesome. He's had a great game you know, in yeah. spots. They toasted a take. Woo-hoo-hoo, he tests the shimbin. He's another one, the goalkeeper. Kept a few out of the back of the net. This distance, it's so difficult to read because of the fact you have players that want to go either side. You can pull it left, pull it right, put a boatload of pace behind it, come quick back across and get it around the wall. Played in. Out to Senna. Quickly played back in. Shinben off his line to clear it. Almost falls for Harding. Sullivan, excuse me. See, it's still centrally located, but as a right footer, your natural progression is to bring this across your body. So the goalkeeper cheats a little bit, but does a good job of recovering. It's a little bit lucky here. A lot of goalkeepers you see come off your line. You got to lead with two hands. You come with one, you're taking a risk, especially because of the fact that there's such a big body in front of you. Come strong, be commanding with that presence in your box. An opportunity. Almeida plays it back. Pepperick trying to finish. Not out of dodge yet for the Dukes. Bailey working. We'll play on. Pinged out wide to clog it. It's 
Sullivan couldn't bring it down off his grill. And so you know, Packer Durham, we always get the latest news and information from the ACC each morning. Special guests from around the world of sports. Packer Durham Wednesdays, or every day, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern. Of course, you get it tomorrow morning on ACC and on the ESPN app, on app one tap. Today is Thursday, correct? So yes, Friday is tomorrow. But Monday to Friday, you get Packer Durham. There's that math, carry the one again, well done. See, I can't read either though. It says weekdays at 7 a.m. I said Wednesdays. <laughs> You went to I think Columbia. You can't read or add. <laughs> I can't do anything. I could barely talk. I think it's time for me to go to bed. 10.04. We're struggling. Laboring. <laughs> Curfew, man. You're about to break it. Tell me about it. Alexander Dexter chops it back. Almeida. Oh, Dexter working. Didn't quite come off. And Goodhue just clears it out. We caught his player as well on a little follow through. That's going to leave a mark. I felt this one coming all the way through. It's a good tackle. But as he steps up in, right there, Stutz caught up underneath him. She catches the player a little bit higher. How's your dinner? Tosa, great ball played into Almeida, a lot of contact. Almost falls for Pepperack. And is Sergio Gonzalez pointing to the spot? I believe he is. And take another look as, yes, yeah, Sergio Gonzalez asking Nishimben, why are you upset with me? Let's take another look. Great ball by Feitosa. How about the Agreed. control off the chest, right? I mean, where's the argument coming from? Harper Cook pretty much ran right through Almeida from the side. So now Rodrigo Almeida, the junior from Salvador, will step up to score his second career goal as a Panther. And he does, goes right down Broadway. 7-0, the Panthers are up. Another player for Jay Vidovich and the Pitt Panthers that struggled with injuries. It's his knee, it's his ankle, but one that he always talked about that could provide the spark. They needed help coming off the bench. I get it, it's 6-0, but to instill confidence in a player that is trying to work his way back into his collegiate career. These are moments and memories that can truly be the catalyst to a great season. Uh-oh, bad turnover. Almeida may double his account right now. He's got Pepperack in the middle. He goes at it alone, and the Shimben holds on. Impressive not to allow any rebound there. First seven goal game for Pitt since 2017. It was a 7-0 win in the backyard brawl. It was a backyard beatdown against WVU. Flick on, you don't want that as a defender. Almost falls to Dexter. That's your final whistle. Devin Kerr, your thoughts on the 7-0 win by the number three team in the nation. By no means was it waxing poetic, but it's a statement victory for the Pitt Panthers to start their season off. Title defense in the ACC. Man, I'm not necessarily sure I'm ready to lay claim to that, but with all the...